Good morning, brothers and sisters. God is good all the time. Amen. The watchword for today is from Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And our call to worship is taken from Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us all stand as we recite our mission statement. We seek to be faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ and to use all that we possess to call all peoples to the truth of the gospel through worship, evangelism, discipleship, and service. Our goal is to provide a spiritual atmosphere that is loving, friendly, and filled with the presence of God, where you can experience the love of Christ through people who care. Let us remain standing as we sing the hymn of praise number 473 in the Caribbean Moravian praise. Ye servants of God, your master proclaim and publish abroad his wonderful name, the name all victorious of Jesus extol. His kingdom is glorious, he rules over all. Let us all sing to the glory of God.
Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please, please remain standing for the Liturgy for Trinity Sunday, found in the Caribbean Moravian Praise Liturgy Book, pages 153 to 158, and in your bulletins beginning on page 3. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You are worthy, O Lord God, to receive glory and honor and power. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place and with those who are contrite and humble in spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Lord and God, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the desires of our own heart. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things we ought not to have done. Lord, have mercy upon us, sinners that we are. Spare those, Lord, who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent and give strength most mostly for Lord, that from this time on we may live a godly and righteous life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. God the Son, savior of the world. God the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning to ask that you continue to cover, protect, guide all those who are asking you for strength, for guidance, for protection. Dear God, we ask that you touch their hearts and their souls that they may be able to reach out to you, that their healing may come, that their faith may be increased in who you are. Dear God, we ask that you just continue to be the gracious and merciful Father that you are, that we understand that with each day that we awake, it is a new day to begin anew in your life. Dear God, you truly have been with us. You have given the ultimate sacrifice for us. You have given us an avenue for salvation. And we ask, dear Lord, that we never be, ever take that for granted. And dear God, we pray for those who are most in need. We pray for those who are on our prayer list. Sisters Cristalia Christopher, Lydia Ross, Charmaine Gillian, Corrine Messer, Rose Claire Josiah, Shauna Rissing, Damaris Bradshaw, Dora Wrigley, Nellarine Newton Saki, Shermel Brown, Claudina Barnard, Janine McDonald, Faith Jerome, Iris Davis, and Martha Thomas. We also pray for our brothers, Vernon Drew, Etherald Christopher, John Jonas, Morris Benjamin, Thomas Christian, Henry Sobrati III, Jonathan Francis, Austin Rowland Jr., Randy Lockhart, Rolston Davis, Reverend Dr. Courtright Jarvis, and Aidan Stevens. We pray for all the children of this church and who were also baptized here at Friedensburg. Our, we pray for our acolytes, the joint boards, our pastors, our conference, the PEC, and our province. We pray for the 33rd Provincial Synod and the election of a bishop, the U.S. Virgin Islands, COVID-19, its victims and survivors, and as well as the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And we pray for our own territory, dear God, that as we are in conflict within our internal selves, that we are able to seek who you are, that our lives may continue to be one where we view love over hate. 
we pray for parents, families, teachers, friends, students, and all the victims and survivors of Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, as well as all those who have been involved in mass shootings. Dear God, today we come to you with our hearts open wide, that you may understand and that you may stand in the gap and answer our prayers. And we know that this will happen as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Lord God, King and ruler of the world, you have made all things by your power. Lord God, you have shown us the glory of your kingdom through your redeeming love. Lord God, ever working in the world, build your kingdom among us. Almighty God, we can never come to know you fully, but in the Son, you have revealed yourself as Father, and by the Spirit, you have borne witness that we are joint heirs with Christ. Help us to show our faith in you as Father by living as your children, our, uh, as your children, our faith in you as Son, by following in your footsteps, and our faith in you as Holy Spirit by your, our obedience to your light within our souls. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in whom we truly believe we ask, that you will strengthen and enlarge your church in every land and unite all those who call themselves Christians in faith and hope and love. Lord, hear us. That your church may strive not for its own safety, but for the salvation, seeking only your kingdom and your righteousness. Lord, hear us. That your church may proclaim the gospel throughout the whole earth, and make disciples of all nations. Lord, hear us. That you may give all bishops and ministers the spirit of wisdom, power, and love, and call faithful laborers into the work of your ministry. Lord, hear us. That we may reverently receive your word and rightly use your sacraments and be strengthened in the body and soul by your heavenly gifts. Lord, hear us. That you will remove from us all hatred, prejudice, and narrowness of thought, that we may receive and rejoice in all that you give to the world. Lord, hear us. That we may dedicate to your service our ability of mind and skill of hand, that in whatever is true and pure and lovely, we may honor your name. Lord, hear us. That regardless of praise or contempt, we may faithfully present ourselves as your followers. Lord, hear us. That you will guide us in all perplexities of belief and conduct, that we may worship you in spirit and truth. Lord, hear us. Glory, Thanks and praise to the Holy Eternal Father. Glory, thanks and praise to the Holy and Eternal Son. Glory, thanks and praise to the Holy and Eternal Spirit. Glory, thanks and praise to the Blessed and Undivided Trinity. All your works praise you, Lord God, and all your saints bless you. Glory and majesty, thanksgiving, and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen.
Uh, good morning again, brothers and sisters. We extend a very warm welcome to all worshiping with us today on this Trinity Sunday. We are glad that you are here with us and invite you to sing at singing time, pray at praying time, read scripture at scripture time, give at giving time, agree with the preacher at preaching time, as together we celebrate the, the goodness and the mercies of God. A special welcome is extended to the members of our graduating class of 1966 from Christiansted High School. We also welcome to our pulpit today our guest preacher. I'm not seeing him here yet, but he will be here. Okay. Okay. Um, Reverend Ulrich Francis, we welcome you in a special way. He's from the St. Peter's Episcopal Church. We are glad to have you here with us, and we look forward to the word you will uh, share with us today. We also have with us one of our youngest pastors in the Moravian ministry, and I would like to ask him to stand and tell us who he is. So he's not also young in the ministry, he's young in age. <laughs> a member of Pastor Fulton, most of you remember Pastor Fulton that was here with us. And he's married to Pastor Fulton's granddaughter. Right? Okay, so you're welcome. Okay, take our love back to her. Tell her we wish her well. All right. Our speaker for today, our guest speaker, speaker is from the um, St. Peter's Episcopal Church. That's St. Peter's up there in Sign Farm. If you know, across from that gas station. And we are blessed today to have him with us. Our pastor is sharing today also at the Bethel AME Church. And so we need to pray for all of them that God will continue to shower them with his blessing and to let his blood wash them as white as snow. So we ask you to remember them in your prayers. And please, if you would like to become a member of the Friedensburg family here, please see the acolyte, one of our elders, or contact the church office at 772-2811 or email us at hillofpeace at gmail.com. We have a special song we would like to sing for you, welcoming you here at Friedensburg. Let us all stand. We welcome you to Friedensburg. <laughs> Thank you. 
indeed you are welcome in this place. It's celebration time. We say happy birthday for Brother Shama Chambers on the 13th, Brother Khalib, a free man on the 16th, Brother Ephraim Druli on the 18th, and we go to God in prayer for them. Almighty God, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given to your children to worship you and to live for another year. We thank you, God, that you have brought them this far by faith. And so we ask you, God, to show them with your blessings, to touch them even now, that they may feel your presence. Help them, O oh God, that they may live day by day remembering you who gave them life, who gave them breath. We ask you, O oh God, to continue to be with them and be with their families as they worship, as they worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. We sing our birthday song and uh, we say happy birthday to all the celebrants. of 66. Can you please stand so we can give you the real Friedensburg welcome? Please stand. Thank you for choosing Friedensburg to worship with us today. May God continue to bless you, and may his spirit go with you wherever you go. Amen? Our offertory sentence is from Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship.
Let us pray. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. Father, you have given us so much, but yet you allowed us to bring back a small portion to you. Help us, O oh God, that we may use these offerings and these gifts to continue our work here on earth. Bless them, bless the givers, O oh God. And those who do not have to give, O oh God, I ask even now that you may consider them, that you may bless them, O oh God, that they too may be able to say thank you. And Father, we thank you and ask you, O oh God, that you may continue to bless us and bless these offerings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning again, brothers and sisters. Please lend an ear to the concerns of the congregation. Persons are being reminded to wear a face covering and face mask when coming to and during the worship experience. And we're also being reminded to sanitize our hands with the sanitizer that's provided upon entry and exit of the sanctuary. Our protocols regarding physical distancing are to be strictly followed and will be strictly enforced. All are invited to join in every Wednesday morning from 6.15 a.m. to 6.25 a.m by a teleconference for our weekly prayer call by calling the prayer line at 712-832-8330 and at the end prompt enter the access code 525-7175 followed by the pound sign. Let us join together and bring before God our personal, church, territory, national, and world needs. Parents, please take note that the confirmation class will continue this Saturday, June 18th beginning at 9 a.m. and all confirmants are expected to be on time and to bring with them all of their confirmation materials. The Freedensburg Women's Fellowship will meet this Saturday, June 18th, beginning at 3 p.m. So all members, please take note of that. Our 250th anniversary mementos are still available and on sale. Please support your church in this venture while supplies last. You may continue to submit your gifts of support to the work of the Lord's Church in one of two ways either by mail to Freedensburg Moravian Church, P.O. Box 617, Fredrickstead VI 00841, or via PayPal at email freedensburg.moravianvi at gmail.com, or by searching the name of the church, Freedensburg Moravian Church. If you're going to use the PayPal format, please be sure to denote in the memo section the following information, your envelope number, if you have one, the ways the funds are to be allocated and the amounts, whether it be tithe, building, weekly, walk-up, benevolence, missions. Let us continue to give to the Lord's work consistently so that his work may continue. And I just want to give one more reminder again, if you are going to put in the name of the email, Freedensburg and Hill of Peace comes up, do not click on Hill of Peace. Click on Freedensburg, or write out Freedensburg Moravian VI at gmail.com or specifically type in the name of the church, Freedensburg Moravian Church. Let us pay tribute to our fathers with our Father's Day recognition tree from now until Father's Day. The donation is $5 and forms per name, and forms can be turned into Sisters Denise Bell, Corrine Messer, or Doreen Christian. The deadline is this Thursday, June 16th, to submit your names, and names will not be accepted after that date. You can also submit your names to hillofpeace at gmail.com. Please print clearly on the form, and also please type the name or names correctly when submitting via email. All conference delegates, please take note that Island Conference will be held next Saturday at, on June 25th via the PayPal, PayPal, via the Zoom format. Um, so all delegates, please be sure of that. And I have three announcements from two from our superintendent and one from our chairman of the PEC. The first one from our acting superintendent, Reverend Errol Connor. Greetings, brothers and sisters. The 33rd Provincial Synod will be convened for two short evening sessions, June 23rd and June 30th, 2022. The main sessions will take place July 17th through July 22nd, 2022, as previously announced. 
Please continue to hold the business of the virtual hybrid synod in prayer. The election of the PEC, the election of a bishop, and God's direction for the ministry and mission of the province post-COVID. Prayers are needed for those. The meeting of conference that was scheduled for Saturday, June 11th has been rescheduled to Saturday, June 25th, beginning at 10 a.m. via the Zoom format, and any inconvenience caused is sincerely regretted. Virtual graduation, the Christian Education Department advises of the postponement of the virtual graduation celebration. This is due to unforeseen circumstances and to the ordination of Sister Judy Winspear Phillips on Sunday, June 12th, beginning at 5 p.m., the same time of our event. The new date is Sunday, June 26th at 5 p.m. Accordingly, the department will continue to accept submissions through Sunday, June 19th. Submissions should state the name, church, school, college, degree gained, and or the future of the graduate. St should be sent, and it should be sent to the email Moravian, Moravian Starry Youth at gmail.com. Moravian Star Youth at gmail.com. Moravian Star Youth is all together. Expressions of thanks, the Moravian School expresses sincere appreciation for the support and contributions of the congregations and individuals in the journey of the last academic year. Final report cards were distributed on Friday, June, te June 10th. Thank you for your thoughtfulness and faithfulness in support of this mission endeavor. The first day of classes for the new academic year will be on Monday, August 15th, 2022, and your continued support is encouraged. Request for prayer. Please hold special prayer for Brother Samuel Reimer, the property manager of the conference, and Mrs. Keisha Shelford, our health insurance representative at Baker McGrath and family, especially for her son, who was a victim of gun violence a couple weeks ago. He was airlifted to the mainland for advanced medical care. He fights on. Grace and peace to all. The second announcement comes from the chairman of the PEC, Reverend Algonon Lewis, and it reads, Dear brothers and sisters, warm Christian greetings in the name of Jesus, our chief elder. The Moravian Church in the southern province of North America recently held its provincial synod. The Reverend Dr. Dion Christopher, who was seconded from the eastern West Indies province to serve as pastor of the Prince of Peace Moravian Church in Miami, was elected to serve on the provincial board. We extend congratulations to Brother Christopher as he answers the call of God to serve the kingdom of God at this leadership level. Let us keep Brother Christopher and family in prayer as they serve God and the church. So congratulations to Brother Dion, who is serving in a leadership role in the Southern Province Elders Conference. Then the final announcement again comes from Reverend Algonon Lewis, the chairman of the PEC, and it reads, Dear brothers and sisters, warm Christian greetings in the name of Jesus, our chief elder. The Moravian Provincial Family expresses condolences to the family of the late Sister Idris M. V. Roberts, G-O-M. Sister Roberts died suddenly on May 12, 2022 at age 87. Sister Idris was a prolific hymn writer and has 11 hymns in the Caribbean Moravian Praise Hymnal. The funeral service for Sister Idris Roberts takes place on June 14th at the Spring Gardens Moravian Church in Antigua beginning at 2 p.m. Interment will take place at Bathsheba Gardens, Lebanon Moravian Church, her home congregation. Let us pray for the family of Sister Idris Roberts as they mourn her death. Counting team members, please take note that the counting team for today is team B, as in boy, and next week will be team C. These are the concerns of the congregation. Please act accordingly where they concern you. The scripture reading for today is taken from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Sister Karen Christian, Karen Christian will read for us. morning, church. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing and the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, 
and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord.
I'm not sure how I should begin. Should I say good morning or what have you? Uh, good morning. morning. It's good to be with you. And um, the good thing about this is that the relationship that I share with your pastor, Reverend Jeremy, is the main reason why I'm with you this morning. And I have no intention of quelling the spirit or of quieting things, but you'll find a little difference in the way that I preach this morning as opposed to what you're accustomed to. Although I'm, I'm not as young as Reverend Jeremy, so I don't have the energy that he has. Okay. I'm much older than, much, much older too. I want to... For those of you who don't know me, this is a poor woman's son from all the way in St. Kitts Nevis, to be exact, Newton Grounds Village. And I've been serving at St. Peter for the past almost eight years, come August. And I have with me, the entire family is not here. I, I think my wife is satisfied with one service, so, but, my son, whom I love dearly and I'm, who I'm always talking about, is with me. Uh, don't mind his height. I'm still daddy. Could you please stand, son? He's there. He's junior. He's Alwick Jr. Okay. So, all right. And there are times that I can be very long-winded, but I promise you, looking at the time, you'll get home in time for lunch. I want to use words from Paul's letter from the reading that we heard earlier from Romans chapter 5, and I'm going to use verse 5. Let me quote it. I think it might be up there. Yeah, it is. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. It is not uncommon for us in our modern churches to feel separated from the churches of the first century, mainly because we use the excuse that times are different. You know, we look at the scriptures and we say, oh, well, this happened in their time because and we have good explanation. Sometimes we think that the early church and early congregations were not as educated as we are, or not as advanced as we are in the 21st century. But yet, we still read, we use, and we somehow, we apply the same scriptures that meant a great deal to the early church and the early Christians, written almost some 2,000 years ago. But truth be told, the only thing that have changed over the years is our attitude, especially our so-called independence and sometimes called selfishness. But let us, let us take a look back at, into the days of Paul's writing to the Christian church in Rome, and let us see how similar we are and how things may not have changed in the way that some of us may think. Though Paul was not the founder, so to speak, of the church at Rome, he was very much concerned with the spiritual life of the community there. And in this particular passage and the text chosen, Paul addressed a number of topics, including justification, grace, suffering, and hope. And as he looked at the current status at the Romans, he recognized that they ought not to be discouraged by their current situation, but that their hearts must be filled with hope. I recalled a few years ago when Irma and Maria had passed here. 
You see people walking around like zombies, especially those of us who had lost things, you know. We cling so much. That's a terrible issue with us human beings. We cling so much to physical things, to our material so-called possessions that when we're separated from them, some of them are lost. And we carry the burden of, oh Lord, I have to go over accumulating all of this again. As I said to St. John and St. Peter this morning, we don't own a thing in life. You know how some of us like to look back and say, this is what I worked for? This is what I gained all the years. And sometimes when we reach the age of retirement, especially the class of 66, you know what I'm talking about. When you reach the age of retirement and you sit back and you enjoy the fruits of your labor, sometimes we don't remember it is God who allowed us to get this. We think that we gained it in our own strength. But it's God who allowed us to get this. You know, I know that thinking about problems and difficulties, I know that this sounds familiar to many of us. While some of us, we feel that we are bogged down sometimes with our struggles and difficulties. And we need to know that these are indeed part and parcel of life. And the truth is that some of us experience them in greater degrees than others. And so Paul was mindful of the struggles that existed in the lives of the Christian community in Rome. And he addressed this in a way that spoke to the presence of God's Holy Spirit to bring comfort and strength in their lives. You know, sometimes in, in my 20 years of ministry, sometimes you go to the hospital or you go to visit somebody who is sick. And I'm sure most of you have heard this. And that sick person needs only one thing, a presence. You don't have to say a word. Just being there brings a lot of comfort to them. And sometimes you hold the hand, you hold the person's hand, and that is all that they need. God's Holy Spirit comes to us. He doesn't even have to say anything, do anything. Just his presence there with us. And the bottom line is this. As Paul wrote to the church at Rome, being justified by faith, having trusted Jesus and accepted him as Savior did not mean absolute freedom and immunity from difficulties and struggles in life. You know, some people in some denominations, and I could tell you many that I have interacted with, some person figure that once I've been saved and sanctified, then there's no trouble, nothing. They think that, you know that part of scripture that there's, there's now no condemnation? People feel that there should be no hardship, no financial difficulties, no illness, no sickness, nothing at all. Well, I have news for such persons. Anybody here from Antigua? Here's the news that I have for such person. Nothing tall goes up. Paul's underlying theme was the future. He urged his readers to look ahead with anticipation and confidence because the coming of God's Holy Spirit gave rise to God's vindication in the end. You know, when I read that passage, this passage from Romans, when I read it, I'm reminded of the story of Job. From our point of view, Job, who was innocent, he suffered tragedies in life that were beyond his control and even understanding. And we cannot understand the depth of Job's loss. But he nevertheless kept the faith and he forged ahead with the conviction that he would be vindicated by the one whom he served faithfully. And some of us, when we uh, as we said back in St. Kitts and Nevis, I have no idea if you know about this. I know you wouldn't know about this, Pastor. 
when we stump our toe. You know what that means? You see, you all didn't grow up in the dirt roads that I grew up in. And some of you might be saying, what are you talking about? You don't know nothing. Yes, I do. I grew up with the dirt roads. And when you're walking and there's a stone deeply embedded and you put your foot on that and you stomp your toe. But the first thing you say, oh God, you turn to God. All right? Do you walk in comfortably down or up the road or across? And why would this happen? What, some sort of punishment or something like that? All right. And sometimes things happen in life for us and we wonder. But I am saved by grace. Why is this happening to me? And we lose faith. We question God because it should not happen to us. Job's life was filled with purpose. Even though he had suffered such tragedy beyond anything he could have imagined, he was filled with a sense of purpose. And Paul brought that kind of firmness of faith and spiritual outlook to the church at Rome. And he certainly holds this open for each of us today, my sisters and brothers. And part of Part of the great significance for us in these modern days is that we live in times when far too many of us are impatient and in a rush. Many of our children are in a rush to grow up. You know, parents, we need to take your time. Your time will come. Countless adults are impatient to fulfill their goals and ambitions. Want to get rich quick. Want to achieve something uh, with haste. And here's a good one that some of you are going to agree with. Politicians want to gain heights, positions, and influence sometimes even before election. Not true? Yes. And when they get there, what happens? They're not bother with you until time for your service again. Students want to rush off their semesters. And many poor persons are giving away their meager earnings to the lottery, hoping to become rich overnight. Need I say more? There's one thing I'm glad for. I'm very glad that nobody inside here playing the lottery. <laughs> we don't have any get rich people inside here. No, we don't. And I'm not going to ask you to respond to that. We're going to take our time. What is for you is for you. If God has destined something for us, who can be against us? When I was younger, Many, many, many moons ago, there was this, pre this preacher from the next village in the Anglican church, a local preacher. I had a Jeep, a small Jeep. It was a Pajero. And when he preached and he's talking about what is for you, will get it. And if you're not, he said, if you're not supposed to get a Pajero, you're not getting a Pajero. So brothers and sisters, if we're not supposed to get big and grandiose houses, if enough for us, not envy who got it. My dear grandmother, bless her dear heart, she used to say, you don't know how they come by it. And sometimes we get it quick, and so it gone quick. Need I say more? How about in the church? Many of us feel and we are convinced that our own brothers and sisters are working against us. Even in the church, we feel that there are some who are working against us. And even God sometimes... We feel that God has to be biased because we, because we can't get what we want. How come so-and-so get it and I ain't get it yet? 
And some of us, we sometimes we can't wait for the congregation to say amen because we can't stand some people in the church. So we want to get away from all them hypocrites. You know, sometimes in church, look at it carefully. Sometimes as soon as we've sung the last hymn or we've said the grace or something like that, some people, gone man. Because we don't want to be with them there. Me don't spend an hour and a half or two hours with them. We must spend some more. Let me go leave them. And you know, in the church, well, this may not have any bearing on this. Sometimes I go off on a tangent. You have to forgive me. Some of us in the church, we like to say, especially when something not going as good, well, no, me, you know, at them there. We have vestry. What do you have? Board? Members on the board. When something not going too good. Well, at them there, you know, no, me. We like to take out ourselves. You know why I usually say, I tell my congregation, you hypocrite, come out, don't stay inside there and be going against everybody else. And I used, I used to tell my vestry, a word to the wise, when anything happened here and we disagree, you go and you say, well, the board made a decision. Whether I agree or not, the board made a decision. Done with that. You're going to cause more confusion in the place for. So yes, to get back with what he was saying, some of us, we want to get out as soon as possible. And get this. Most of us get downhearted, desperate, and despondent when we get a little cold. Put by when some form of serious illness strikes us. We want this to go away as soon as possible. We question God. Or some of us, we say, somebody working or be on us. <laughs> when I was growing up, anything happened, it used to be or be on us. Some neighbor or somebody working or be on us. Or somebody put some dirty water at the fence. And some of this foolishness. And many of us in the church, when difficulties and struggles strike us, we ask, why me? You know, up to now, some of us haven't yet come to grips with the fact that we are not immune from the sufferings in this world. None of us is exempt, no matter the office or the position that we hold in the church or in the world. We are not immune from difficulties. You see what Paul said? When that reality sinks in, it is then that we can come to understand that God has given us the wonderful gift of his Holy Spirit to endure all that life has to offer and to look forward in great anticipation. No matter what we go through in life, sisters and brothers, we must always have that positive attitude. You know what I tell people? One of my favorite, not my most favorite, favorite, one of my favorite hymn is God is working his purpose out. It doesn't matter what struggles I go through. And then my most favorite hymn, through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy, the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. In 2018, my 89-year-old mother, who doctors felt would have lived to be 125 or something like that, was killed in an accident. Standing up the side of the road, and some, I don't want my son to feel bad, but, or any young person, you know, some young people, they like to speed, and they can't control the vehicles and all this kind of thing. I don't know why it's... They don't take their time. Sometimes they just get licensed and they want to show off, you know. And when my mother was killed and I went home, I wasn't coming back to St. Croix at all. Why my mother? And that's earlier that same year I told my congregation, do not plan anything for April of next year 
because my mother is going to be 90 years old and my going home for a couple of weeks. And imagine that. And I was like, why my mother? And I wasn't coming back. And then my favorite hymn came to me through all the changing scenes of life. You see, some of us only want smooth sailing. When we get to those rough waters, we don't have the faith. We don't have the courage. We don't want to go on. Sometimes we want to give up. Whether it is in trouble or in joy, God's praises are supposed to be in our hearts and on our lips. All redemption by Jesus Christ is just one step in the direction of eternal life. Unless God decides to suddenly remove us from the natural world, we would all be prone to experiencing the challenges of life. We can't go shopping around for the perfect life away from pain, sorrow, loss, hurt, and difficulties like some people do go around shopping for church and congregations. And sometimes we feel that if only I can change position or if I can give up an office or change my church or denomination, all will be well. Not at all, Gosso. Sometimes... The change has to come from within for us to accept that we can't change certain... You know, I read something the other day. I'm sorry, I'm finished soon. I read something the other day. Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of your response. With God, we can't allow circumstances to dictate how we react our attitude and our relationship with God. That positive look must always be there. God is working his purpose out. God sometimes uses difficult times to see if we have what one priest back home used to call his stick to itiveness. You understand that word? See if we have that. We can't run and cower and give up every time our faith is tested. We need to stand firm and boldly on the promises of God. Not only on these promises, but we need to stand on the fact that Jesus Christ has overcome this world. And since he has given us the presence and the aid of the Holy Spirit, we need to believe that we too can and we will overcome all adversities if we endure to the end. You know, there's a saying, it's in scripture too, that we take very lightly. Whenever challenges and difficulties come our way, we look it in the face and we say, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. My brothers and sisters, we may not be experiencing joy now. Some of us may be going through some very dark things that the others don't know. Financially, health, family, whatever it is. Just keep saying this. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy is going to come in the morning. And so today, as we join the rest of Christendom in celebrating the Holy Trinity, let us give thanks to God for our creation. Let us give thanks to Jesus Christ for our redemption. And let us give thanks to the Holy Spirit for his protection and sustenance. Let us not lose hope on the sufferings, whether human-made or natural. Let us not be daunted by those who are doubters and skeptics. Rather, my sisters and brothers, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he that has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to encourage one another to love and good deeds. Not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more 
as we see the day approaching. Let us know that God's Holy Spirit has given us the will and the way willful to conquer and to overcome all challenges and difficulties in this world. And now, to God the Father, to God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, be ascribed as is most justly all due, might, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. and use you for his work. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of response is hymn number 38, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, In Light, Inaccessible, Hid from Our Eyes, Most Blessed, Most Glorious, The Ancient of Days, Almighty Victorious, The Great Name We Praise. Let's all stand.
commissioning, after which we will invite Pastor Francis to give us a benediction. Our commissioning? Yes. That song? God the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, guide you in truth and peace. The peace of God which passes all understanding may keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 19 from the Caribbean Moravian Praise, during which we will receive our walk up offering. Holy, holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Let us all sing to the glory of God.
God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Our weekly inspirational scripture is taken from Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 3. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Our thought for the week, God loves every one of us, no matter what our flaws, and Jesus Christ died for us, and we live for him. The Holy Spirit gives us courage to overcome our fears. My brothers and sisters, God bless you. Have a spirit-filled week.